The goal would be that regardless of who it is, we can have an honest conversation about the impact of mental health. Well, tonight, tonight, a conversation about mental health and race. WRTV is taking a deep dive into the differences in perception of race following a shooting. Our Stephanie Wade is leading the conversation tonight. Mental health and violence. It's a conversation that followed after a 19 year old white man killed eight people and injured five others at a FedEx facility last week. But is it discussed enough when it comes to other shootings happening on a weekly basis in our city, especially when some say the suspect is a person of color? I'm just tired, right? You know, you're tired of you're hearing this. You're always shocked when it's this kind of close to home. Um, and then the million dollar question, is he black or white? <laughs> you know, I think that's where everybody's mind immediately went to. Sitting down and having an honest conversation about race and violence. You hear the horrible term black on black crime. Um, you hear all of these things, but time and time again, it's white men doing these mass shootings and it's not talked about at that scale. Kia Wright, founder of Voices Corporation that provides a variety of services to kids impacted by crime or incarceration in our community, is frustrated. She says the violence we see on a regular basis in Indianapolis has less to do with black on black crime, as she puts it, and more to do with proximity who people are close with. It's interpersonal issues rather than a race problem that she's so tired of being depicted. Like it doesn't need to be addressed because they're killing each other. You know what I mean? It doesn't, you know, they don't value their own lives, so why should we? Right, citing a study. The PTSD levels are higher in high crime areas than some veterans returning from combat. And so we put that at you know, 15, 16 year old kids, what is that doing to their, their development? You know, it's stunting everything. Our kids in this program literally see death every day. We've had a kid lose eight friends and we're just in April. Saying many times the teens committing violence, their decisions are made from survival mode. Rational decision making is hijacked by the brain if it has been traumatized. Abuse, neglect, poverty, incarceration, all things that can traumatize a person. Here at Voices, they talk about that, how trauma impacts the brain and development. When you go through the seven stages of grief, it, it's starting over almost every single day. Um, and then when they make these poor behavior choices, you know, we're, we're blaming the parents, we're blaming them, and it's like, well, have we talked about have they had counseling for this? You know, have we talked about the dad's not been in his life due to incarceration? Have we talked about that they've seen addiction and domestic violence? They teach their kids that they can overcome this and work to heal their trauma instead of turning to violence. But Wright says healing has to be community based and they need the tools and resources to do that. I think hey, we need to tell our stories and have more platforms to be able to talk about all the greatness that comes with us so that that becomes the norm. They need, you know, communities need to see us graduating with master's degrees and getting doctors. They need to see us going into post-secondary education. They need to see these things. And it's, it sucks that we got to prove that to anybody, <laughs> you know what I mean? But to start having these conversations, there has to be a counter-narrative, and right now there isn't. Stephanie Wade, WRTV.